Hello and welcome to episode 7 of Pure Dairy Talks. It has been 20 years since I started writing uh, as Pure Dairy on the internet. Back before social media, back before Facebook even was uh, thought of. Um, it was just a website that I would update on a Sunday night in HTML and upload to the internet. Um, and it actually went viral on email uh, long before you could actually go viral on social media. People used to just forward links and emails. Uh, that's that's how old Pure Dairy is. <laughs> but one of the early columns uh, on Pure Dairy was a column called Man About Town. And it uh, parodied a local journalist, come surfer, come broadcaster, uh, called Pat Markerson who, of course, was a direct party of Mark Patterson. And uh, back in the day, it was all for about a crack, and me and the contributors to the, the website just had, you know, um, just didn't, I suppose we didn't care back in the day. We were just, anything was, was fair game, anything was open season, um, and, you know, it wasn't done cruelly or, or with any malice. But I suppose because Pure Dairy was anonymous uh, back in that time, it was hard to really understand where the intention for those articles was coming from. So later down the line, uh, we launched the Pure Dairy Forum, um, which was, I suppose, a chat forum that others of the public could get involved in, and it became hugely popular. And one of the threads on that forum started discussing local uh, characters. And one thread in particular started making fun at the expense of others, uh, not famous people, just private citizens. Everybody thought it was about a crack, uh, but it became a real point of concern for the family involved. Um, and I found myself on the Mark Patterson show on Radio Foil for the first time coming out to, I suppose, defend the honour of Pure Dairy. Um, and I was trying to make the distinction that Pure Dairy, the website, and Pure Dairy, the forum, were two separate entities and two separate things, and that you know my editorial team weren't involved in, in the forum. But of course, as was pointed out to me at that time, you know the buck really stopped with me, and I was the you know the person with their name above the door. Well, not really, but so to speak. Um, so that was a real lesson, uh, but it also made for a very fraught experience. Uh, because we, uh, me and Mark got really into it. We went toe to toe on the on Radio Foil way back 20 years ago. First time we'd ever met and him thinking this is the guy that's taking the piss out of me. But I am delighted to say that Mark and I have gone on since to become pals. Uh, we, you know, we would keep, uh, keep in touch. Um, I've gone on to become a contributor to his show on a number of occasions and, um, you know, we have a mutual respect now, and I think uh, we've we've put all that to rest. And uh, he understands, and I understand that it was just a bit of fun. But uh, Mark is someone that I have huge admiration for. He is a great broadcaster, and he's also someone who is a massive advocate for the city. And uh, I wanted to bring him on the podcast and have a chat to him about being, I suppose, um, one of the most well-known non-dairy dairy people. Uh, and just to see how things were going for him. So this is Pure Dairy Talks, Mark Patterson. This is like turning the tables. This is how many times have I been on the opposite side of this know, conversation, like across that desk in Radio Foil, um, and that daunting experience of you just like, it. It's so it's so disarming if you've never been in that situation before where you're like, just sitting with these big headphones on with a microphone in your face. I, re I remember that first time when we ever met. Um, and we'll, we'll it was get that. Fraught. It was fraught. It was. See, I, yeah. all I want to do is ask you questions because I, I wanna, know there's so much I know that people want to know about you. And you and I have got to know each other, right? So I, I mustn't be, be the questioner here. I suppose it's going to happen. You are going to click into uh, Mark Patterson mode. No, I'm not. I'm not. I, I'm... No, I'm not. I promise. Are you sure? I promise. I... Is that a hand hat you have on the wrong way around? I, listen. Kieran, we've got to be so careful in this interview, right, for protocols, because when it comes, you know, it's like <laughs> product placement, you know, like hats. I can't describe what that hat is like, but, you know. Uh, no, I get that. Uh, the product, is you've that got not, to be so careful. Is that, not, is that not difficult working for the BBC? It can't is. Be... I, I can't do that product placement stuff at all, you know, but, uh, <clears throat> you know, so let's let's just veer away from that stuff from the from the outside. Uh, okay? No, that's fair enough. We'll, we'll, leave, we'll leave it out of the, leave it out of the. Yeah, out of the equation, okay. Out of the equation just completely. Throat Fine. here, just get the throat a bit of tea. Like you didn't, you'd never been in Derry until you were what age? What? How did how did you come to Derry? Twenty three. Uh, 
you you Pat Markerson this one time, and, you, and your information was good. Your sources were good. I had been running about like a young fella, Kieran. So uh, I'd worked in England. I'd, I was an outdoor pursuits instructor with canoes and rock climbing and abseiling and all of that stuff for a couple of years. But I'd, I'd left Queens because I was meant to go to study away overseas, but I fell through. But my mate was running YMCA summer camps in uh, Cumbria. So I got myself a job in Cumbria and just got into outdoor pursuits. So I was running around the world, early 20s. Not around the world, like but trying to do my best to travel. I was doing a, you're going to pat markers in this. I was, Kieran, I was ice climbing in the Alps at the time. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it was. And my ma kept getting worried. My ma's in Lurgan. And she kept getting worried that I was going further and further away from home. You're what? You're going to Belfast to do the degree? What? You're going to England? And then it was, you know, the, the Alps. And I was like, and she kept sending me jobs, right? And I'd never applied for a job in my life. And this one came through for a London area YMCA, needed a general secretary. And the YM had been in the city, you know, over 100 years and they moved out, drum a hole, all the exodus stuff, all that, of which I was completely and blissfully unaware. And I just thought, you know what, I'll do that for a year to keep, A, to keep my ma happy. And B, I just got my postgrad in uh, youth work and community work. So I thought, look, you can't just leave that behind. So I came to Derry, honestly, because my mate, uh, Brian Sweeney, had had us up uh, to his house Knew nothing about the town. It was just, it was transformative. I really mean that. Mm. It was like, you know, you go to these great cities in the world and, you know, the original stoneworks there. And I thought, how can this be an hour up the road from my sheltered existence, you know, in Lurgan? So I came to the YMCA, set myself targets, and they wanted to sort of get the funding structure redone. They wanted to have a proper modern youth work program. So I was responsible for that, getting festivals going. There was like 20 something programs happening. And really trying to get the YM back at the civic heart of the town. But I like to think we did a job, you know. So 93 to 99, I, I, was, I just got absolutely immersed in the life of the YMCA. 70, 80 hour weeks. The big rave thing, I don't know if you remember, Infinity. Yeah. The thing called Infinity where we've got young people like raving for real and making money and sailing to Iceland and all this kind of stuff. And I never expected it. And then in the meantime, of course, the Troubles was tail ending the Troubles. So uh, invariably they got a tall fella out and drum a hoe who can string two words together. So, you know, it, it got a bit silly. Like Radio Foil said, oh, we'll, we'll send the radio car out. And then it was like Radio 4 and then Paxman on the TV and all that there. And I was like, God, what did they ask me to do this for, you know? Cause... So, so hold on, because I've never heard the story. So so you got asked to, to speak on, on, a, on an issue. That's how yeah. you kind of... Right. Okay. And yeah, joining that's... us from the community. All those, you're sort of, all, uh, you know, your Ollie's and Chantalo... Your Jeanette Warks, I was one of those people. You were, like, you were, you, you were kind of like, like I am. I like you would come to me for for, for comments on occasion exactly. on your program. Contributor, so you were yeah. Doing, yeah, very good. But, but when stuff was going wrong, so I was trying to do some innovative stuff on the sectarian divide, especially with young loyalists who were disenfranchised. And I mean, it was some brilliant stuff and brilliant, brilliant young people. But I was knackered, man, because I'd throw myself at it, and it was really difficult, you know, with the all that sort of sectarian, post sectarian stuff, you know. But anyway, I've been dipping my toe and then Colm or Buckle, the great Colm, uh, mentor of mine, you know, basically said, you're working with young people. You should do something on Radio Foil about young people. So I did this thing called Wall City Nights, which was just, I didn't know anything. So I just had a mic, he's a girl up there, and I went up in the walls and young people were just so honest with me about their lives, their drinking, their fighting and arguing, the, you know, boys in the fountain, boys in the bog side, all of that kind of stuff. And it went down really well. And I'll never forget the day uh, I came in here one day, Colin was editing, and I was going, cheaper than Radio 4. And Jerry Anderson came up to me and says, you, you, that fellow Mark that did that thing. And I was going, what? Jerry Anderson's just asked me, am I Maybe. your man? He said, and he, and he was so encouraging about it. And I thought, what? He's just, he's just spoke to me, you know? <laughs> because you knew he was in about here. Like, you know, you knew this. And because I was, you know, Queens and the Troubles, it was Jerry Anderson who really listened to. It. it was like this incredible you see him now for what he it wasn't his fullness like but he's just mad and funny and smart and cheeky yeah, and then i just got more and more enmeshed in radio foil i had no qualifications in the media my degrees were nothing to do with media and the boss at the time was a crazy goth from sligo called anna letty and she was she was magnificent you know man's world anna just banged the doors down and she says you know mark listen to that uh, documentary Go in there, play three songs and, and talk to three people uh, as a wee pilot. And at that time, Danny Kelly had been Mr. Kind of Radio Foil daytime talker and Danny had parted company with Radio Foil. And she said, do you want the job? I need an afternoon presenter. <laughs> oh, 
on the spot. Wow. Fifteen minute, fifteen minute I... pilot. Yeah, I'm, I'm all right then. <laughs> and that was twenty two years ago. <laughs> See, I, I, it's that's kind of why I was getting to that idea that you know I, I just you're such part of the furniture now in Derry. You know, you're broadcasting and and being sort of part of the ecosystem of the whole city that. Um, I, 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 I never actually heard that story before about how you <laughs> came came to prominence and how you. So you were working in the YMCA and they ran got, the YMCA in Drumahoe as a as a twenty year old. They put me in see, charge of an organisation of hundreds of thousands of pounds. We've talked about the YMCA. <laughs> you, you've mentioned it in several conversations, but I've never actually heard that piece of connective yeah. tissue be, be, between how you moved yeah. from you know doing that into the actual broadcasting. Well, side. I was able to come in as because I'd qualified then professionally in Lancaster with all that stuff about how to do really proper programs and how to do mm. proper fundraising and proper recruitment and selection. So, you know, I was able to establish a youth work team and employ full-time people, part-time people, voluntary people, you know, put child protection structures in for sporting clubs and youth clubs and all that. So it was really exciting. Like, but God, the work, work we got through in, in there, but the, the people were great. You know, the people were really, really great and wanting to become, you know, more modern, you know, but more women and more people from both sides of the community or, People with no religious bent at all, and it kind of changed. And with some uh, honest, I can stand over that work and say with some amazing, amazing days, you know. So December '99, I come in this door, and Mickey Brady says, "Sit down there. You have a lot to learn." I was going right. He says, "You're going to answer the phones for three months. Uh, I'm going to teach you, and I'm going to be your producer." And I tell you what, the best in the business. I mean, Mickey, uh, Mickey is just insanely talented and smart. Mickey takes no fools, you know. Mm -hmm. Mickey doesn't like it, you'll do it again. You know, if he doesn't like it, you'll do it again. And if he doesn't like it, you'll not put it out. And, you know, he and I battled because, you know, he'd got this big upstart lump from Lurgan to put manners on in Derry. And I was an outsider in every sense of the word, you know, stating yeah. the obvious. But Mickey and I, I don't know if Mickey would agree with this, I hope he would, but we became this producer presenter team. And you couldn't get a matchstick between us, you know. And mm. Mickey defended Radio Foil, and you know, boys were coming at me for various reasons. I mean, I used to get threats and stuff for God's sake. And uh, Mickey was just the champion of. He was brilliant. And then you had Colm, and then you had Jerry Anderson. Yeah. You had Eamon Freel upstairs, another genius. You had Brian Mullen doing the English language or the Irish language stuff. And you didn't realize walking into this, these were exemplars. If yeah. you were to find a better person, doing funny speech radio, well, tell me who's better than Jerry Anderson, yeah. doing music, even to this day, Mickey Bradley, there's no better. No, exactly. Eamon Freel, God, what a, what a, ge what a genius he was. Yeah. And these people were running about, you know, do you want a cup of tea? Hi, 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 hi. If you told me, man, 22 years, and I laughed at you, I didn't think it'd, I didn't think it'd last 20 weeks. That's crazy. But, uh, That's and that. I think there's something in that, Kieran, as well. When you don't, there's an awful lot of people media wise now. It's all like, God, I gotta get on the TV and I gotta, I gotta get on the radio. This. And yeah. I had no, I honestly had no more notion, yeah. you know. And I've taught media studies since and lectured and all the rest. And there's so much, and obviously, the, you know, doctors want to be doctors, you know, journalists want to be journalists, broadcasters, and all the rest. But there was something about that coming out of the troubles that wasn't, I don't know, I didn't want to be in Belfast or London. Or these places, even though we were cleaning up as this wee tiny station yeah. in Jerry's day in particular, you know, we were like, there's Elton John and yeah, there's your man out of the who. And then and the gold reward goes to Radio Foil. And like we're walked up past these people, you know, in London. And it's like, I thought that was just normal. Yeah. <laughs> so it was David and Goliath stuff now. Yeah. We were up against the big networks and all the rest. Latterly, it's called the Emeralds because it's, the Sonys are no more. There's the Arias, which is a broader thing now. But in Ireland, it's the Emeralds. And my program's done well on that, and their station's done well on that. Like, so, don't know what it is. I think it's about the connection as well. Dairy people take no nonsense. Yeah. You know? Or if you don't like the look of something, you'll rip the backside of it, you know, and you'll, you'll be in pure dairy or... Well, I mean... Fry, you know? <laughs> and that, we, we have history there. And, man, you know, that's what I liked about it. It's like, you're not going to kid these people. You're not going to be Mr. Middle Class up here, no. which is where I think you got the Pat Markers. And I'll take them down. I'll take a patch, Mr. Oh. Middle Class. I'm the last... You know, I'm, I'm from a housing estate. You know, my ma brought, you know... Was there in her own like so? Well, for but it's for, crack. Well, for people, I mean, I, I mean, if anybody's unaware, I mean, I, I'm aware that there's different demographics of people possibly watching this and don't realize that, mm. um, or maybe have since forgotten that you know, back in the day <laughs> when Pure Dairy started on the internet before we were even a face, the Facebook wasn't even invented. No, it was just no. a blog uh, posting up. We had a column on the Pure Dairy website. 
uh, called Man About Town, which had a <laughs> <laughs> which had a um, a fictional uh, local journalist called Pat Markerson, who was of course a parody of you, um, surfer, and, uh, surfer, um, middle class. Cappa Frappuccino. Cappa, Cappa Frappuccino. With and, a walnut crumb. Uh, pumpkin seed ciabattas. And, uh, <laughs> and, and um, yeah, and I suppose kind of that's... A Jerry Slanders in the other as well. Ge- well Jerry yeah, I mean, I think we, we, when, we ran out of, when we ran out of material for you, and, and I think when we sort of pushed our luck as far as we could, then we, we started doing Jerry Slanderson. Um, and we started doing that. And, and I, I look back on that now, I suppose... I slightly, I mean, I don't, I don't regret it. I don't think you should ever regret things in life. But I, I, I genuinely look back on it now because I've told you that we had a certain amount of contributors that, that contributed into that, and I was just a facilitator for those for those articles to come I, I, on. But, but you're not apologising, are you? No, I'm not apologising. No, man, I'm not, that, that I have to no, say, I'm not no, I mean, I, yeah, but you and I, you and I. Our, our our initial meetings weren't uh, cordial. Let's put it like that. Even on well, air, we had you well, on air, it, and we had a whole powwow. It but, was a great man, background for that. That work. Uh, will go down, mm. and I, I actually now, even though the Pat Markerson thing is a rip off, I am so proud that I'm even th- just <laughs> even the thought of putting you know me in it or my, your version of me, right. Kieran. It needs acknowledged. You're writing at that time as an outsider. Yeah. I remember saying to you, "Well, do you, do you let people know who you are?" Because I remember the grief you got. You know, mm. boys coming after your mortgage, and you know, you, you know, you were saying some well difficult things, mm-hmm. but man, the writing was exceptional. Mm. I really, I, I want to acknowledge that it was like it was exceptional, and you were giving people a Jerry Anderson thing only in, in parody, you know, where people were just laughing their heads off at yeah. what at what you were doing. So you you honestly deserve great credit for that. Well, thanks, you uh, thank you. Um, I mean, and, and you deserve deserve great credit, I suppose, for being a great inspiration for uh, for uh, Pat Markerson. Uh, but it, it provided it provided it genuinely <laughs> provided this kind of context to our first meeting, and our first meeting was. In Radio Foil, my first ever time coming on the radio, and yeah. there was at the time uh, a a forum called the, the the Pure Dairy Forums, which was you know was a, a bulletin board message board on the internet. And it was things, rough. Things it had been rough. said. It was rough. It was rough. I mean, if you imagine your Facebook page and kind of multiply it by ten, there was something said about yeah. a, a gentleman, well, a well-known dairy character, That's a well-known dairy respectful. character. Yeah, and you and I disagreed about his representation. And yes, I, and, I, I knew his family and all the rest. And yeah, we went toe to toe, and we got it all out there. That that created a kind of context to the first time we met, whereby I suppose there was that sort of awkwardness because i yeah. was also writing a website that was taking the piss out of you basically and but you were coming out of the shadows as well i think and mm. you i think you were wanting to that come was, out of the shadows i think i wanted to defend the work first and foremost yeah. but i think you made some good points on on that as well that i've since taken away with me which was that he was a private citizen mm. and it's funny that it's now something i defend against on our, it's something now that i i take though because i was only what age was i mark i think i was only 22 21 22 that's I 20 20 years that's ago 21 years ago 20 years ago yeah 20 years ago i think i think it's exactly you were writing pure dairy at 22 year old yeah yeah wow can you feel proud of it honestly can you of, of can course because i, proud? Course I think there'll be people yeah. looking at that archive in 100 years and, and laughing still you know mm. i hope so uh mm. yeah i feel i feel really proud of it and uh and i don't think it's done yet i think it's just evolving you know with all these mm. types of stuff the other things that i'm doing now at the moment i think it's mm. just evolving um but i think i've another book on me so right. um yeah but like well, cheers to, cheers to that cheers <laughs> he was uh, meant to bring this to my house and put it in the coal bunker and he forgot so we had to go with all sorts of day for me to get this <laughs> all the other satirical platformed porcelain uh, devices are available of course uh exactly uh, from all from all good outlets uh on the Come on. market have you done your research come on <laughs> come on murray let's have you since that initial meeting with us uh, in Radio Foil, that your own Facebook page now has become kind of like the the, the central the central nervous system to your entire show. Um, mm. You know, when it's kind of changed now from the from the original sort of because there's there's nothing like that back in the, back at the time. There's no social and media. I just make it up and go. God, this is good. Let's do something stupid. So it's kind of evolved to serve the program more, you know. You know, I always kind of see pages like yours and to a lesser extent what happens on on your dairy as well as a as a kind of litmus test for people's mindset and mood across the city. Well, it's a counterpoint, you know, and people are going to always think that. I mean, there were people 
when I was when we were chairing that meeting about oh, well, what do we call this new bridge? The peace bridge, oh my god. There were numbers of people in this part of the world who didn't want the peace bridge, you know, who wanted the money given to the health service. Even though European central funding, you know, if you don't use it, it does not go to Alton Miguel, you know, it goes to a bridge in Mostar, it goes to, you know, something new in, in Bulgaria or Paris. But I remember that and people didn't want the peace bridge, you know, you can't even waste money on peace bridges, you know. So you're up against it all the time and sometimes I think people get angry with me as the platform carrier or as the name on the tin kind of thing. Yeah. But you have to do your job and say, right, look, it, I, I might disagree with this person all day, but as long as they keep us out of court, you know, they have a right to their strength of opinion. I find it, I have to be honest with you, Karen, I find it really st- stressful some days, you know, especially if the heat is really on. There used to be a lot of sort of sectarian stuff that came up and it was like, oh my God. And you would meet people out and about, you know, who would say, oh, it's your man, oh, you know. And you're disliked on the fringes of, of both, you know, mm-hmm. you, because if you're doing your job properly as a BBC professional, you leave your politics at the front door, you do the job. And if you ask a question that's about, you know, uh, the Mute Meadow, for God's sake, the Mute Meadow, or, you know, parades or protests or... And if you get into that stuff, invariably people say, ah, but you're this and you're that and you're this and you're that. I, Kieran Murray would say that, you know, or Pat, you're your man yeah. Patterson. And yeah. it's stressful because you're genuinely trying to... Man, I take it. I honestly take it seriously. It's yeah. public service. We're not trying to sell anybody lemonade or mortgages. We're here because the people pay a license fee to have public service broadcast. And it's only until you go around the world to see how it's decimated everywhere else that you see how lucky we are. Or to yeah. similarly, you know, these are yeah. imperfect, yeah. but when they're you, good. When you've got co- commercial commercial broadcasters who are yeah. just yeah you know, doing it all selling on, papers, on, yeah, sell, yeah, selling selling airspace, selling ad space. Yep. Yep. No, and I mean you touched on something that I suppose me and you both have um have experience with and can probably speak quite openly about is that sort of the public reaction to not only um not only stories that happen but to yourself and your own character when mm. these things happen like that thing that oh you, there he's he's at it again he's meddling he's looking for engagement he's yeah winding people trying, up winding people up he's trying to do that and i suppose from your point of view you're known as a, as a type of broadcaster and a type of interviewer who will get who will get to the bottom of an issue so and i i've always loved that i've 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 always said well once i once i got that initial blood and done that first day way back in in, in radio foil i've always appreciated the, I've always appreciated the um, that when you come into your show that you know that you're going to try and find a way to approach this from a different direction because I think yeah. that's what makes it interesting. That's what makes your show so good um, is that you are able to try and find a counterpoint, try and find something uh, to to actually approach a question or to to ask the questions that others in the audience will ask, and, and it doesn't necessarily have to be your the question for your benefit it's the question mm-hmm. for well i'm only playing devil's advocate what if other people say this and say that you know well it's I not think... even that if I, if you're going to be respectful to any guest or contributor you have to ask the questions that actually are relevant to what they're saying you could disagree with them all day religiously politically socially all of that stuff but everybody has to have a place you know and I, i'm very protective of that plus it's not just you, you know your man on the facebook page or behind the mic you know if it's not up to standard for professionals of decades of experience behind that glass. This is where I think I'm an advantage to you, Kieran, mm. uh, because with great respect, you're a one-man band. You know, you haven't got a producer going, here, Kieran, watch that there, rephrase that there. You know, every word in here, every yeah. sentence, change that, yeah. uh, put that comma elsewhere, and producers going totally mindful of, of legal difficulties, quandaries, policy matters, briefings. You know, I think people just say, oh, geez, your man just switches the radio on. I mean, the briefings in here are, are brilliant. And if I don't come up to that standard, yeah. you know, I have to live up to their standard every day. Not you know me just sitting here making things up as I go along, but that again, it's a BBC plug. I don't care, but public service broadcasting is about being brilliant, and they're brilliant because they come from every walk of life. If you think of yeah. newspapers, well, that newspaper sort of slants that way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or that uh, commercial crowd kind of slants that way, but in here we're all sorts and no sorts. Yeah. And. Everything, well, well, not everything. You're human beings, but it's left at the door, and it has to be. Well, of course, there's there's a lot standard. of people. Who, there's a lot of people who would say that the BBC aren't. Of course, there's a lot of people who would say that the BBC lean Absolutely. on different ways, and they don't. They well, don't it's, it's too, but it's too, BBC's too far left. It's too far right. Your yeah. man hates uh, loyalism. Your man hates republicanism. He doesn't like nationalism. Doesn't like unionism. He's a Lundy. All you get all that stuff, Kieran. Yeah, yeah. And no, in a way, I, that's good because you're uh, getting it from all sorts. I get that. No, totally. And then I suppose the the the, the the sort of juxtaposition of what you're saying about having producers and about having 
quality control and production yeah, values yeah. With, with with all that is that um you know with something like this as a podcast where it's more conversation based and where it's going out on an independent platform like uh you know like pure dairy is that mm. um i have more freedom <laughs> and more and more, and more autonomy so it kind of goes the other way but i also and have more that. susceptibility to getting in trouble you know because I mean, yeah. that's where the I mean, media's going that way as well bbc's challenged that way it's all about podcasts you know and somebody just chatting for free producers have nightmares about that you know because invariably they like having control of content, you know, that's not yeah. going out. You can't say that. So, you know, even a conversation like this, you know, I, I have to make sure that I'm not getting the BBC in trouble or, you know, that I'm operating in the same. So in a, in a sense, Kieran, you know, you're performing and I'm performing. And I think people know that, you know, so where we take yeah. these platforms meaningfully, I think that's a challenge. Yeah. Well, that's interesting because I, um, I actually, I'm actually have been trying to not perform. Um, and mm. I, I feel very strongly that, um, people's mental health um, and where, where you sit with your mental health you are you are more at, at contentness with yourself when the person that you you portray and you and you mm. communicate uh, is is actually the person that you are it's just it's the difference between this the actualized self and the perceived yeah. self and um, yeah. and that's why people who are on Instagram and these and these uh, you know, social media platforms letting on to be to have this amazing life and then really they're an emotional and secure wreck behind the scenes. <laughs> Um, and I, I actually am as authentic as I, as I want to be. I actually believe that this is me and I, in general, but you're right there. But you can't extent. be coming on there doing what you want. You can't, you mean, if you were doing this totally yourself, you're sitting in your underpants, you know. Well, I am, um, no, you actually, hold on. He's all right, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, you know what I mean? There's a, there's a line. Yeah, of me, course, think, of and course. I think people understand that. There's the all people... the effect, affected stuff, the, the beauty myth stuff, all that stuff, and then you try to be... As close to yourself as you can be. Well, I, that's that's my approach. People think oh, your man's an idiot. Well, sure, that's that's their thing. No, I don't think they do. I don't think. But I think there is there is a frustration. I I get that myself with when people can't separate the person from the personality. You mm. know, they can't separate. They can't separate. You know, the fact that you're doing a job or trying to achieve a target from you know you as an as an individual. Um, and I think really I've got the point now, Mark, where. Um, especially if we're, if we're talking about online criticism and online um, mm -hmm. speaking out, and we we both had our fair share of it. I used to try and ignore the negative, and then go, "Oh, but it's fine," because I've got like loads of positive comments. I've got a few negative ones, and I'll just ignore them because that's thing. And and then I realized that well, that's not that's 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 biased as well. So I'm at the point now where I do, I just take all of it with a pinch of salt. All of yeah. it. I just be like, "Yeah, whatever." I got X comments, and yeah, everybody's. Yeah. Whereas, like, a B, whereas a BBC producer. Yeah. And I can say this without fear of contradiction. We'll say uh, there's two comments coming in there. I think you're an absolute uh, agent, and that we're down the Swanee with the wrong paddle here. Read them out. Yeah. And that's that's us serving that license fee pair. And I will read them out, and we yeah. will absolutely, you know, not yeah. try to you know, molly coddle stuff. I hope. I hope. Uh, the TV looks great, by the way, in the background. It's coming through really well. Yeah, great ratings in that show. Yeah. <laughs> that's a it's a still life we call it. Uh, there was a committee meeting. There's no, I've no nose. There was a committee meeting about the nose. Do we give him a nose or not a nose? <laughs> check your, check your mug. There's no nose in the mug. Is there not? No. Close up the nose. Right. I why have you not got a nose? Why, have because they just a... thought, look, put it up right close. Yep. No nose. That was a committee that, decision. The British Broadcasting weird. Corporation. That's weird. <laughs> that is weird. You have no nose in your mug. Uh, and your, and your, and your, and your avatar. How do you smell? How do you smell? Awful. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've completely lost my, my, my trail of thought now. But I yeah. anyway, we were chatting. We were chatting about um, online criticism, how you deal yeah. with it, and I kind of, as I say, I've I've come through full circle. There used to be a time in the past when that stuff really affected me, um, you know, and it would have but been it's upsetting because it's real. Mm, it is, mm. but but I think you realize as you go through life, and you just you can't please everybody, and you can't mm. you mm. can't be everybody's cup of tea, you can't be everybody's you know flavor. It just it just it's just not the way the world works. And um, I think you come to a realization that there's just people out there that have other things going on in their life, and they just want to lash out and they just want to say cynical things. And I was going to say where I'm lucky though was when I came here, I, I, there were community champions like there were you know huge figures, and I was the young fella. I was a young kid, 23, arriving and wanting to be a part of this. And what, let him into the meeting, let him into the meeting. And so they let me on stuff, you know, with the, with the Betty Feeney's, the Eamon Deans, uh, you know, the list goes on, uh, Helena Schlinvein. And, you know, we were setting up these partnership boards and city partnership, and I was the kid on those. So I had the advantage, Kieran, 
of being mentored formally and informally by giants in this town, yeah. you know, many of whom had come through the troubles in our loyalist Protestant communities, but making it better. Many of whom had come through civil rights St. Paul's and Bogside and going, we had to knock the doors down to get the community centre. And they were, they were what you would call possibles. I came here and I was just blown away. My God, these people are innovators and exemplars. So I felt as the young kid that I had to be as, uh, as aspiring as that. So I always had, and I just, I think it's seeing Derry with an outsider's eyes as well. Although I've lived here now long and I've lived anywhere. You just can't wake up in the morning and not see the potential of this place. And yeah. then you understand the history, the socio history, the university question, roads, infrastructure, all of that. And it, you know, if you're a human being, you got to see the truths in there, you know, and the why people are upset about stuff. But yeah. also the p potential of this place, yeah. riverfront location, Donegal five mile away, five minutes away for God's sake, you know. I just, I, I just I don't know. I've just I've, I've genuinely come to love the place. <laughs> you know, I often forget. Talk, go back to the top of the show because you're part of furniture here. That you are, you are not from here. You're from you're a Lurgan man who moved to Derry, mm -hmm. but. I always forget that sometimes. For to me, you're just Mark Patterson from Derry, and that's you're you're a Derry man, and you're here, and you speak so um, so um, so passionately about the city. See, and I, I'm the opposite. I feel like an outsider every day, honestly. Yeah. yeah, because well, yeah, I do. You are you are definitely somebody that people appreciate as a, as a you know an honorary Derry man. You you're, you're always oh, you're I'll always you, well you are you're you're a great advocate for the city. Um, you I know, love and I, I think, love the town. You know, I yeah. love it. I really love it. As well as that, coming from my community background, you know, which is very, very different to most people in this part of the world, I think when you get it, and I, you know, I've I've spoken to you know former loyalist paramilitaries about this stuff. I've spoken to Republican guys and all the rest. But see, when you get the dairy thing, and when you get the London dairy thing, mm -hmm. and the passion of it, and why it goes so deep in people, I actually find it profoundly moving because then people go, do you remember up in the Glen, you know? If you go up, I mean, if you go up Rosemount now, all those streets are named after Methodist preachers. Do you remember the on the we all the flats are was a Methodist church, and people are starting to. Do you remember yeah, Epworth? Was it Epworth Street? Epworth, all that stuff. Oh, Epworth Hall. You know, remember remember when all the Catholics left? Remember we lost our yeah. Catholic neighbours? Remember when the Protestants went over the river? And you get this, my God, it's heartbreaking. Yeah. But it really, I think, when you get that, uh, I I I honestly I find it profoundly moving. Because yeah. you realise how much harm was done, yeah. But how yeah, at the heart absolutely. of people was was an amazing community. Jerry's documentary, Jerry Anderson's amazing documentary about old Derry. You know, God, I, you know. Yeah, the, the integration, the sense yeah. of community, and all that seemed to disintegrate and yeah, sort of yeah. evaporate when Taken, yeah. when the troubles kind of uh, hit their height, and that's a it's Big a real shame. And people, you know, people don't, you know, we're in such a a kind of mindset that we're, we're pushing for whatever brand of politics that we want but mm, you know we don't mm. often think about what we lost the but community. there was a, was a girl a lady came on and she, she didn't want to go on the radio but she said you know what's lovely you know the new cafe in Brook Park What's ha what happened was was it Big Dalton was saying that some of the families the Protestant families had moved over the water to kill Fennin uh, but they were coming back Kieran, uh to the wee cafe to have a cup of tea with their old neighbours uh -huh. you know maybe having kicked football 50 years ago Seriously, troubles. But then people go, "Actually, I'll meet you in the week." Ah, grand, sure. And it's not an issue. I just thought that restoration. Oh my God, beautiful. Yeah, uh, that's, you know? that's 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 lovely. I suppose that's kind of what this podcast about. This podcast is about Brilliant. a wee bit, wee bit of connection, a wee bit of sort of reaching out, and not only having conversations with people for my benefit because I don't bloody mm. see anybody because I'm stuck at home all week. <laughs> but also with the wee lady, with the wee lady, with the wee lady. Uh, who's Hi, up on it? There she is. Paternity, paternity suits you, man. I've always wanted to be a dad, so it uh, really? it came it came at the perfect time in my life, you know. Right, right, so, right. I, um, but. Um, it uh, I've completely lost the train of thought now. What we were saying? Talk oh yeah, well being. Yeah, yeah, mental well being. I was gonna. I wanted to ask you. You posted up a wee video, and I'm. We're friends in mm. in real life, not just on things. So we we know each other. We're on each other's Facebook pages. Um, mm. and you posted up a wee video at Christmas. Um, and I found it profoundly touching. And mm. I don't want to give anything away. So it was just kind of you just sitting, and you were just kind of talking to the camera direct, mm. and you were just like you were on your own for Christmas Day, and you were talking about. The challenges of being on your own and yeah. about essentially struggling with uh, your loneliness and your yeah. and your um, and just getting through this pandemic uh, on you you know 
going to work and coming back and not seeing people and losing that sense of connection and mm-hmm. I have to say I, 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 I was just enthralled watching it thinking you know it, it spoke to me because I live alone as well um, you know we, we, we don't necessarily we mean you kind of work in similar kind of spaces and that we're you know we're, we're communicating and publishing content or putting out content yeah um and i content see providers Stuart content Lee providers us. that's all we do provide content yeah uh but I, I i i resonated with a lot of that stuff so how i mean in terms of the the mental health side of things how have you found the last the last year or how, you, how are you finding it tough 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 I haven't seen my man down a year i'm hopefully going to see my ma if they let her come up at easter my folks are, you know, they're not 21 anymore. Uh, but man, I, I find it tough. But then I also, when you see and hear what you see every day, I don't know, there are people who don't take, I've got different views than me, put it like that, on vaccines and COVID and all the rest. But, you know, I think when you're able, I'm able to do it solo. And, you know, I have friends here, doctors and nurses and trust people in all care. And, and, you know, there are people, and I was counting it up the other day. I haven't lost anybody. Have you lost anybody like in your immediate circle to COVID? Immediate? Not the, co- not the COVID, no. Well, you know, you've got your immediate circle. Mm-hmm. And then their circle is the next one out. So you're in my circle, but then yeah. the person yeah, in your I'm, circle. Yeah. I think 11 or 12 deaths. Really? In, in my circle's circle. Thankfully, you know, nobody in my, uh. you know, my family or friendship, immediate groups. And I just thought, this is serious, you know. I'm, man, I haven't been out. Three, it's a year now. I've been out three times in a year. Felt great in two of them, and I felt a wee bit edgy the other, and I haven't been out since. Walked to maybe six times with friends at a distance, and that is it, man. You can nearly forget in circle. If you didn't do the radio program, you'd forget the English language, how it worked. Yeah, it's... You're, you're, you're taking it especially serious, but then I, I suppose... Am, because you, I can, you... you know. I mean, if I thought that I was making one nurse's life easier by not you know, taking, you know, a risk with COVID, you know, I, I could look at myself in the eye you know yeah I've always you know other people that. can't do that other people got wains and elders to be about you know so i think it's incumbent on those of us who are able you know to to, to really take it seriously you know yeah to do it. i i feel the same i yeah. you, you've got an obligation because you can to do it and, absolutely uh, and there's as you say there's always <coughs> in, the, in the privileged positions that you know, some of us are in to, uh, yeah, to be able to stay yeah. at home and stay out of the way so no absolutely and because we're public service, you know, I have a job to do in here to keep it going. It really, everything changed in here. This is like a hospital these days. I've got this room to myself. I mean, Steve McCauley's meant to be in here with loud rockers and stuff. You know, there hasn't been a guitar played in here for a year. So I realised this was going to be a, a tough owl haul. And then you're going, cheapers, you know, but relationships, companionship. I'm sure you think about that as well. Mm. Midlife crisis, that's probably a bit of it. But then I realised... <laughs> You know, uh, this is going to be a haul. This really is going to be a haul. Uh, so Christmas, you know, that wee video we're talking about, it just, I don't know, I was just thinking, right, you, you could sit and mope all day and you have every reason to mope, you know. Uh, but I just thought uh, of the people in my life, you know. But it was... Um, I have a very close family up here, you know, old family, uh, old friends. And, you know, I always do their daughter a ham and she doesn't eat ham, but she eats my ham at Christmas. And right at the front door... And we exchange gifts, and I just said, "Look, I don't care. It's not worth it, you know. Uh, one of them even getting sick because you know we we have to have a turkey dinner. So I took that decision, and I, so nothing Christmas. I just wrote it off, Kieran. I'm actually what I, what I want to do is have a full turkey and ham dinner in July or something in the heat, do you know. Mm. But daily, man, it's tight. It's t- you know yeah. it's tight because in this job you see the best of stuff. You see." this town aching for a tipping point and i think when it comes and i think you agree mm. you know we're the last city of standing in this island you know uh cork is away dublin's away belfast's away galway's away yeah. limerick is doing grand Derry's the last one left i want to be here to witness i hope i live to witness that yeah me too but i just think it's a year especially for people living on their own and i've really come to think about this i, I you know you think about other people living on their own you know, we neighbours up the street and that, and it's done wonders for our wee street. You know, you're Sense of dropping community. food round to a friend, or friends dropping something at the door. So, I've been witness to kindness, unlike anything I've experienced in my adult life. But also a sense of, hi boy, you be careful here. You know, keep reading, uh, keep eating the right stuff. You know, don't be getting takeaways four nights a week. 
uh, stay in touch with people, lift the damn phone. So I've, I don't know about you, but protocols for me are, I try to phone two people every Saturday for deaths. You know, that could be your ma, your da, uh, your buddy, you know, your friend, whatever. And it's those little hygienes of, right, just make soup and eat, eat oh, that's my soup, eat good soup for four days, you know, and that's, that's an achievement, the body's fed. But man, for me, it's been a year back to absolute basics, the joys of beans on toast, Getting into a house where the roof doesn't leak, having a job, man. You yeah. think about the people not just yeah. furloughed and maybe losing twenty percent of their former wage. I mean, twenty percent is a lot of money for a lot of people, mm -hmm. but people out of work. What what we're hearing from Dove House and the, the advice sector about what people are facing, food banks and stuff, man, it would bring a tear to your eye. You know. Yeah, yeah, it's been a tough. So it's tough. you know it's that thing about being thankful, and that we video did on Christmas Day. You, I was just thinking about all the people that I couldn't see, hug, touch, feed. And just go. Do you know what? These are amazing, and my life is my life is blessed with the friends you know that I can call you know true friends. But you know, hopefully, most of us can. Say well, that. you know, I find that interesting as being someone who is your friend in real life, and mm. you know, and seeing that we talked about the person and the personality. You mm. are someone who I mean, I think that comes across as well too, very much in your in your output, but. Even though I could tell you were struggling and and had and had were having a tough time at Christmas and were mm. missing a lot of people, it was also very positive. It was also very. Mm. It was also rooted in gratitude and in um and you could sense that you were um were were finding that opportunity for growth and were appreciating that opportunity where you were like you know what I'm going to come out of this year in a better position regardless. I know it's been tough. I think a lot mm. of people's finding that. I think I. I always try and find the positive in things. I always try and reframe things. And, and I have, without doubt, even though I've had a tough year and family front and, you know, deaths in the family and all the rest of it. You've lost people, uh, man, I know. I know. Uh, it's been, I mean, I've, I've spoke about that on several occasions and I don't want to, mm. I don't want to keep going over it, but it's, all right, all right. but it's been, it's been, um, it's been as well, a massive opportunity for learning, for growth. Um, and I mean, you're talking about the financial side of it, like on the, on the interesting side of it, I haven't qualified for a single penny Get of support. Away. Not one pence have I got across the course of this pandemic. We had a we had put a pot of money away for for essentially for building the next phase of our of our business. So effectively what's happened over COVID is that we have spent all that money on sustaining our lives. All our plans as a business to grow has just has gone out the window. So there's something about this town, man. That when it's given a chance, and you and I know an awful lot of those players, young players, 20-somethings, 30-somethings, and they're doing it because they can do it and they're able, but they're yeah. also doing it because they're going, I can do this in my town, and yeah. I want to be ahead of the curve for when Derry does get good stuff. All the Everington stuff start, well, hopefully starting to kick in. <laughs> I, I, you know, I there's so many of them. You know, those fashion heads, those a lot of beauty heads, and all that medical stuff's going to kick in as well. I don't know, man. I just I find it um, inspiring, you know, that they're, yeah. they're, people's waking up. I and people. I mean, I love anything that's that's uh, shoot people showing a bit of uh, ingenuity, creativity, yeah. Um, yeah. Showing, showing a bit of hustle to to start something and to give uh, their time to something. Um, I've talked about this with, with someone else recently too. You know, this idea that you know, oh, you got to get a job and you know, get a mm. reliable job and thing. And, and and don't get me wrong, it's great to have reliable income, and a lot of families rely on that. But there's a lot of people out there who are are not of that mindset who will be unhappy if mm. they don't pursue at least try all you have to do is try i love that and that's why i'm involved in things like the lab the, the, the little lab fund that i'm involved in too this Amazing fund, stuff. fund. So I mean, you guys are handing out thousands of quid at a time mm. so we give away 10 grand there well 10 and a half Great. grand at, at, in yeah. january i think now we're at the point now where we've kind of refined it a wee bit where it's not just about you know ideas it's about backing mm. people who have actually gone that first step they've gone right we've started we're off and running now, and it's already, you can already see the public response to us. You know, people like Divine Sense, um, mm. you know, Arc. Arc, we, we were one of the first people that we... That Arc we Fitness, yeah, Gary. Arc Fitness, Gary, yeah. Gary. Oh, Gary's in my so. youth club in Drum Hole. We never... He, may, he actually, he actually he mentioned the that. He was running about the 10-year-old. <laughs> he actually mentioned that it's when I was so Like, you meet these people, up, you know, full-grown adults, and you're going... I was his youth worker. Oh Lord, don't start me. Um, when I mean, we were talking, you mentioned on something there now, which was about about mute, mute meadows. I, I don't oh, know if you see. <laughs> like mute, mute meadows to me is like is like the the epitome of uh, of that type of content in the city that sort of completely polarizes people, whereby 
even the other day someone put yeah. a post up about it on on one of my platforms and it was like it was loads and loads and loads of comments because people just want to feel so much outward hatred towards it have you gone and seen it at night on a good night in the summer when it's lit up it's beautiful it's breathtaking mm. But in the daytime, it looks like girders and a a building that somebody started and never finished. I get that. Listen, Kieran, I tell you what, I've stood on that Peace Bridge some nights. Maybe we late one coming home after a couple of scoops, you know, in the town. And I just stand, man, and the the jaw drops, you know, because if you look at it from the right place in the Peace Bridge, the sort of lights, you know, hit the water. And it's like this magical scape. Maybe too many scoops. But uh, (laughs) I like it, man, because it shows... I Somebody's think going, do you know what? I'm going to do something that nobody's expecting us to do. I like that. Yeah, I, I mean, look, I, I have been, um, I suppose, <laughs> critical of it. But I think my point I was trying to make is that it's it's 10 years on. And even if you yeah. don't like it or doing it, and the, I followed up with another post after was saying that, you know, look at the surrounding area. Look at all mm. the greenways. Look at the Peace Bridge. It's look great. at all the connective tissue that's being built around the city. How about we focus on the positive stuff? How about we focus on the successes not on yeah. the failures. I mean, that was the, that was the basis of all the early period. Early was focusing on failure, you know. And my mindset's completely shifted now to focus on success. Um, well, that's good. I, but I get that that must frustrate people as well because people want you to be this kind of scurrilous, skeptical, um, you know, commentator that's going to hold people to account and all the rest of it. And there's only so many hats you can wear. And for for this phase of my life, I choose to wear <clears throat> the hat that is about. Um, positivity and about attracting people through um through yeah. actually good commentary as opposed to as opposed to oh, i'm okay but, on occasion when you need a whole things to account I ah, but it's... you're but uh, you know I, I was lucky enough to meet your your father that one time up in rosemount and i got the sense this is this is a dairy family and mm. i think there's a thing there which is absolutely ice ah, so you're just stick two fingers up at it and get on with, it with your life but also kieran boys like you're just about old enough to know what the town came through because yeah. you'd have had that from your man dad yeah. And when you know that a town didn't get a fair hand, let's put it that way, in the broadest of senses, I think there's something about a bounce back. And I think you're part of that generation, or you were certainly one of the pioneers of that bounce back thing, yeah. even though you started out so, let's be blunt, like kind of cynically and pulled down you know. But I, I was coming from a place of almost being used to that. And then I think you, know, you were starting to go, hold on a second. You know, let's change tack here. But you well, know, you were you you were forefront on that, and again, it's I, credit well, to you. I think I I I understand that these things still need to happen. I understand mm, that there's still time. all these issues that this Where's money needs to come. Everything? That this investment needs to happen. Um, but I'll, I've just kind of realised that across cor- over the course of the years is that constantly mm. complaining about it isn't going to bring it. Exactly. You know, creating the positivity where dairy is amazing. Dairy is an amazing place. Let's focus on all the things that we already have. Let's focus on the good stuff. And then people, oh, God, there's great stuff happening at dairy. That Halloween festival's great. Yeah, and the jazz man. festival's great. And, and if you focus yeah. on the positive, then good things happen. And it's it's literally, I think, it's literally like the secret. If you've ever read the secret, it's that idea yeah. that, you know, what you put it in the universe, you get more of. It's can, ge- be. can be. Literally that, that's all I think needs to happen on a city, city-wide yeah, scape. Yeah. And I think it genuinely, it genuinely happens. But see, anyway. I've had the beat. I mean, for twenty years, I've had the best seat in the house and all that stuff, because mm. you, you know when you host stuff for the city, you know, Clipper and Christmas lights and all that there kind of stuff, and then do the radio program, and then you you watch you know Halloween starting on the back of a truck, literally on the back of a truck. I remember it. You know, yeah. when I first came here, I used to get in a wetsuit and get a an ironing board under my arm, and twenty of us walk from the waterside, you know, surfers, and put the ironing boards up and put the cans on the ironing board, and it was it was wild, like it was wild. Yeah. And then seeing it become this global attraction and seeing the jazz, you know, from Johnny's idea and Gay going, oh, surely we've got a few great jazz players. Look at our jazz festival. Look at that whole Maritime thing kicking in with Clipper. Look at the potential of the key being realised. You know, I've had the be- I have had the best seat in the house. You know, so I think that's what fires me up, maybe, because I have to do it anyway for my job in terms of reporting on it. But when you see a city changing in real time, you know, in, in your own time, yeah, it's uh, good. Yeah, no, it is, and and I think I I I understand that you have to be um, have a certain amount of patience. And when I look back in the city, you know what we had, ten even like we talked about the the time period of twenty years ago when I started writing mm. Pure Dairy versus now. I mean, it's completely, was wild, it's completely it? transformed, and and you know the streets, and, the fight in the streets. I remember it like it was yeah. it was visceral. Pound of paint, no that pound of paint, pound of paint. <laughs> Shipkey Street. I mean, t- uh, you know, Shipkey Street. Hundreds of guys boxing. Yeah, a Halloween did. of you know just like what, you know, 
keep your kids well, in the house. <laughs> so it's been it's been transformed. You, I'm glad you mentioned you mentioned the surfing there quickly. About the you know you've been you known as that Mark Patterson, the you know the the, the surfing broadcaster. Is that have mm-hmm. you have you, you still you still enjoy a bit of surfing? Or are you, are you retired now? No, man. Uh, st- the surfing pages went well early because Louise Gallagher, Brona, the actress's fabulous sister, Louise was my webmaster in the early days when you were starting out. And she was just centuries ahead of her time. You know, she's now a filmmaker. But Louise said, well, we'll try some surfing on this, th- on this internet thing. And we did the surfing pages. And that became great. So I, I sort of wrote that every week and broadcast a surf report on Radio Foil on a Friday. <laughs> but it went well and people liked it. And it was getting traffic and it was getting interest and an email group and, you know, big database and all the rest. But uh, I went heavy at the surfing for about 20 years but I told you I had an accident didn't I yeah I was luckily yeah. just about to ask you about your accent yeah. tell, tell us about that that was something I, I wanted to just we, we'd made a program myself and another brilliant Radio 4 producer called Connor uh, McKay and Oman we'd made a, a, a commission for Radio 4 the first ever permanent documentary on Radio 4's new archive uh, back in the day it's still there Cold Water California you know about the uh, Irish surf and all the rest and Connor's just a genius but we had about a crack and we thought right Bit of time, you know, can you get away from the family just for a couple of days? We'll go down to France and we drove from the waterside down to the Basque country surfing. And I would track this swell and I thought that's going to hit the Basque country next Tuesday night or whatever it was at about half seven because the, the models are so good. You yeah. can see them coming five days away. Man, we arrived flat ocean in the Basque country just outside beyond Kulnul, a wee beach called Kulnul, which means bare backsides. It's a, it's a nudist beach. Uh, Pat Marcus from there. And we what we we arrived, Batman. twenty minutes. The swell arrives, and we'd we'd driven from Derry, tracked the swell, and it arrived like twenty minutes after we got there. Couldn't believe it. Perfect weather. I was the oldest guy in the lineup with the biggest surfboard. You know, when you get older, you you're not as good on small boards. And I got this wave, and suddenly they go, yeah, go Irish. So it was like a hundred in the water. Electric storm hits. Everybody's out. I'm saying, I'm getting an all wave here, and I got a second wave, and then not massive, but not small. And then you can do a wheelie off the end of them and let the board go into the air and then you dive in head first into the channel. But like from 10 foot down, the channel was that deep. So it went bang and hit, uh, hit C6 and broke my neck. So out for a while and that's where those other issues, I think you, you have we talked about this publicly about, you know, fitness and that? And, yeah. you know, I, I just, talk- I was fitness just as an accident because of surfing. If you surf, you're fit, whether you want to be fit or not. But then on your back, two months, you know, recuperation, fear, you know. When I think of what we did in the water back then, man, some, especially some of the guys I surf with, and then up to the different level of the likes of Alistair Many with 60-foot waves, you know, I just, i petrified of it now even looking at it. So it taught me fear, and I thought if I can't do it as well as I used to do it, I'm not going to do it at all. So I haven't surfed in a couple of years now, man. Was and that, was it, that the know? end? Was, did that accident basically, was that your last time? No, I went out surfing two months after I broke it. C six just there, and I got a couple of waves. Not that that's grand. I remember, but I was so I'm cautious. You know, it's like you're going if because that happened. My accident didn't happen in twenty foot waves. It happened in a foot of water for about a month. It looked like it was possible that I was going to be you know living in a wheelchair. So wow! And a neighbour who brought me food at night, you know, and the grace of that, you know, that she brought me food because she knew I couldn't make food, <laughs> and I'll remember that the rest of my life. And then, you know, you get up and you go right, I think I'll walk to the shop, I mean, I'm, you know, and it's 100 yards away. And then I'll walk to the Peace Bridge, maybe ne- tomorrow or the next day. And I'll walk over the Peace Bridge, and then I'll walk over the Peace Bridge and meet a friend for tea or a cuppa. So it's, you just got to rebuild it that way. So uh, incredibly stupidly unlucky and incredibly fortunate in terms of it, it just healed itself. It just closed over like a crab's claw, like that. And it didn't need surgery, so. Wow. Ridiculously lucky. Uh, you were were lucky. So, Mark, what's what's next then for um for Mark Patterson's show? I mean, what's next for Mark Patterson personally in terms of what you're you're broadcasting? I mean, are you like I, you, the quality and the standard of the stuff that you're doing in the city, regardless of um, you know, I think it gets compared sometimes to Nolan because it's that type of show that sort of tries to talk about the issues and talk about some of the grassroots things happening. Um, and the good stuff, hopefully. And, and the good stuff too. Yeah, of course. I mean, it, you, way more positive than 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 he is, <laughs> without a doubt. I mean, you, have to, you don't have to prove that to me. I mean, um, have you you talked about Radio Four? You talked about all that. I mean, have you any other any other things in the pipeline that you're working on? Are you, um, are you now in your wee content place of contentment now? Where you're 
I started out doing doc, that document, and I did a couple of documentary series for radio for Ulster and Foil, and I loved that. But Kieran, you get to an age, honestly, uh, doing this every day. It's not like lifting potatoes or building the houses, but mentally, it's it's tiring. And when you're doing a five day a week, it's almost like creating a newspaper with language every day. It's a new narrative; can never be the same. Can't do yesterday's stories. So, uh, my team are exceptional, and I'm not just saying that. I mean, most of them are younger than me. And they're Derry Donegal heads. And I just feel I have to make it my business to put it as high a standard as we can and make it as knowledgeable, informed. Hopefully it's a bit of crack uh, as well. So Jerry Anderson taught me something very, 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 very early. Because Jerry had gone over to England. Was it Radio 2 or Radio 4? And the tabloids in England uh, just lambasted Jerry. And he came back kind of to hear with his tail between his legs. Back to foil. Stayed in Derry. And then the Ulster gig came after that. And Jerry said, it was along the lines of early in my career, he said, listen, whatever you're doing, it's kind of connecting. You know, and, and I was green behind the ears, Kieran. And he, he says, you know what? He says, there's so many people in this industry that never connect at all. You know, just go through the motions or whatever. And, you know, if he's right or wrong, good luck to people. But he said, you, whatever you're doing is connecting. He says, and it, you don't, he said, along the lines of you don't have to go to London uh, to connect. And if you're connecting, don't ever underestimate that. So I just always thought, you know, somebody has to do a job here about writing this narrative. It's only a daily radio program, but it's more than that, you know, in terms of documenting stories from their inception to the completion of the Peace Bridge or Everington Hotel or whatever, or Halloween or whatever. And I honestly am starting to think about it as my life's work. I'll probably get sacked next week, but uh, I'm starting to think, and people are telling us, you know, that it's meaningful, you know, that yeah. people spot the difference between our nonsense and stuff that's trying to be thoughtful, compassionate, informed, entertaining. And man, I love it. And I don't, uh, I don't need to be on TV. I started on TV kind of with Christine Blakely way back in the day. And she was brilliant at it. Like, and you know, it was me and her, you know, I would be the boy jumped out of the airplane and the boy went surfing every week. And now Mark's going shooting clay pigeons while Christine was just being fabulous. And I said, Christine, you're brilliant at this. I can't stick this, you know. It's like all yeah. day for five minutes on the on the yeah. TV. Yeah. Whereas the radio, especially on a day when stuff's happening, Kieran, 90 minutes of effort is 90 minutes of content. And then stuff happens, like the passing of John Hume. And then for three days, things change. Then a pandemic kicks in. And you're going, right, what do people need? And it's not like you're, you're bringing care packages, but intellectually and psychologically, in a way it is, and people are telling us, I don't have the internet, me yeah. pensioners, but I listen to you. And you're going, do you know what? I, I can be proud of that, you know? Of so yeah. I, don't, I don't want to be on TV anymore. I maybe want to write before I get old or too old. I think I've got a couple of books which might be absolute rubbish. I'd maybe like to do some more documentary work. But man, for now, I, I've just come to, this is going to sound really twee, man, I don't care. I've just come to feel it as a privilege because the people largely mm. have trusted me. You know, at the start, I wasn't very good. And I, you know, I really wasn't. And I didn't have a clue. And it was producers like Mickey and Colm who guided me through the architecture of Derry. And then, you know, of course, you start reading about stuff and understanding stuff and meeting people. And then uniquely in this job, you're meeting everybody. You know, it's not yeah. just them ones, it's us and them ones and all the rest of them. And yeah. creatives, cultures, politicals, economics, private sectors, you know, way out lefters, way out writers, all of that stuff. And I just, I'm profoundly, I'm profoundly grateful for it. Well, you, Every day, blank screen, guys, what are we doing? What, what do you think? Oh, well, I have an email. Well, what are you doing? La, 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 radio program. It's all the program. Man, it's good. Uh, of course. It's good. <clears throat> I, I love that. I think that's, I think that's, that's the, I suppose the answer I wanted to hear, and not only for, because I want, to have any um, opinion or, or want to have any direction on what your decision making is but mm. I think that there's always a pressure in life to feel that you have to be oh I'm doing this and I'm doing that and oh and next I'm working on this and especially mm. if you're in a professional capacity where people's asking uh, you know about oh what are you working on now and I almost felt bad when I asked that question because mm. I I love when people are just like I'm happy I'm in a good place yeah. I'm content and I don't need to be I don't need to be doing anything more and I'm happy with with my place uh, you know and I'm and even just to say I'm not doing anything I'm happy I'm happy to yeah. just be yeah. um, to just be in this space um, you know and I um, I've moved home to Derry and I decided to make you know that this was going to be my home and, and I am you know I'm I'm obviously you know 
always trying to look for different angles and ways to do things but essentially i'm looking for that space as well i'm looking for that kind of um mm-hmm. i just want to be uh my true authentic self that's but, all but i'm isn't trying it, to but do. kieran look and it's not about you know being all oh, aren't you fabulous but isn't the town better for you you know, not just the satire that have people rolling about the place in desperate times, but then pure dairy kicks in and your dairy and then the, the, the granting thing and then trying to go, right, what can we do to make this town? You know, you know, isn't the town better for having you, you know? For me, oh. I, I, I will always feel the imposter thing. I'm a Hallian from Mornby and Lurgan. I felt a Hallian in Queen's University. What? They let me in the Queen's University? I felt a Hallian in England. I felt... Like what? They're going to give me a YMCA to run? I I feel like I've never been able to career wise. You're asking about that. I've never been able to just work those systems. You know, you know, press the flesh and all the rest. And to do television and stuff like that, you have to be good at that stuff. And yeah, you know, be you know, here, look at me, and I can do this for you and all the rest. I mean, I don't lack confidence in that sense, Kieran. Yeah, but I, I, Jerry especially taught me that stuff can be peripheral. Yeah, and I always feel like an imposter anyway. So, and I think it's good when you feel like an imposter in here because you're not feeling like, hey, you know, I deserve it, or you know, you know. Every day I go, God. Well, I often think, what else? What would I be doing if if I'd done that or done this and that? But then I go, I'm going in two mile away from my house today to make a BBC radio program with exceptionally talented people and an audience that I'm dying about. Yeah, and it's like, I, I that's. You- it's like it's, it, you, you're choosing happiness because I think I think your show is uh, is is fantastic. I think what you do is fantastic. I think the way that you do it, the production values on it are incredible. Um, I mean, I was kind of nervous about coming on to speak to you today because um, I, I well just because I think people I don't have any grounding in any of this stuff, and I'm near the, being, but here near the eye. I but, was teaching I was teaching media studies in the regional college, and the ones with an O level in media studies had more qualifications than I did. <laughs> Uh, well, I think that's. I think it's just having the. I think it's just having the. Um, you know, the nerve to just try and do it. And I'm. I'm. I'm being very um, open about the fact that I'm just learning in public. All this stuff, mm. like uh, even the production values of these podcasts, as I'm putting out. Um, you know, you can sort of see them gradually every week getting slightly better. If not in the, right. if not in the delivery, then the the technical side of it, the, the you know, whatever. And I'm. I'm just happy enough to just be like, yeah. I'm not going to be trying to be perfect this from from the outset, um, but I, I, I do. I find it interesting and 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 nourishing that you are just like I found my happy place, my contentment in life, and you know, and that's what I want to do. And you, you mentioned that saying that as your legacy, and I think it is. When you're lucky to get a gig, it's like you find a job you like and never work again. And it's, I, 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 I'd never, I've never been nervous about it. I get nervous in front of people. You know, doing things with a microphone outside and stuff, but I don't get nervous in this. You know, because our teams are so small here, you tend to get very, very, very good people yeah. who want to stay here and have made their lives here. And I could go on the list, and it's even our front of house people. You know, Jerry's right hand woman, Janet. Janet gets me more stories than I get on emails. You know, you know, we make a point that whatever you know, a couple of times a year to play Jerry, and it's like you just think he's just going to walk through the door. It was a wee teapot. Jerry was always like, if the, you know, the star. You know, everybody wanted to meet Jerry, like and. The rest of us plebs were just going, oh, Jerry, I work with Jerry, you know, I work with Jerry. And, but I, I used to love it because Mickey and him were thick, obviously, and Mickey latterly produced Jerry. But Jerry often, uh, when we were downstairs, you know, upstairs was always busy because it was all the new stuff and really, 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 really hectic. And Jerry had a wee teapot in here and he used to make tea every day and steal your buns. He never brought buns in the bugger, but, but he would come down just and sit at the desk beside me and read the papers and know nobody's going to have a word with him because nobody bothered with him. I did that, you know, for years. Not every day. And I mean, Jay and I weren't buddy, 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 buddies. But you know, I, I, I just, I, you know, I worked in the same building as Jerry Anderson, mm. and I saw what he did. And the, you know, just there's nobody, I, nobody like him. You know, yeah, nobody like his best. I love this. Remember the way I was actually wondering that when you were showing me the cup was. You remember the wee flicker picks cartoon of Jerry? Well, that's where like, I was the first. I that... got that because Jerry had done the cartoon. So nice. then, when everybody was looking for merchandise, I said, "Well, what can can the boy that did Jerry's cartoon on the radio that... uh, on the air? Right? Can he can he do a one of me? And then he did one of me, and then a load of them have got them now in terms of uh, flicker picks. Uh, what do you call the guy? Exceptionally talented guy, Joel. Joel Simon. Joel Simon. Joel yeah. Simon. That's him. I I actually know people who used to work for Joel, so I would work in similar circles. I can talk to you, you know, openly, which is nice, you know. 
Well, I'm not. I'm not an interviewer. I'm not trying to approach these like interviews. No, I'm know. trying to. I'm trying to approach them like conversations. I don't want. But I would worry about being I, interviewed by you probably more than probably you know media people. I feel more comfortable when it's just a conversation where it's just two blokes yeah. chatting about stuff. And we're just taking the conversation wherever it wants to go. Because I used to, I did the first few and I had like a prescribed kind of ask us, ask us, ask us, ask us, ask us. Yeah. And it felt very forced and fake. Where mm. now I'm just like, I'd rather just let the conversation take its own shape and see but where, Kieran, it, where it takes But Kieran, fair play to you. You know, you're always looking for the other platform. And I, and I think at the start, you and me were sort of Facebook wars. You know, who can get the most, who can get the most, who can get the first million posts and all the rest. Uh, I'm I'm honestly over that stuff now. Yeah. You know, I remember the time it was, well, you were first, and then it was uh, the Rice Bowl. <laughs> the Rice and then Bowl. the Dairy Journal kicked in, I kicked in, and then Big Pat Ramsey kicked in laterally. And that was yeah. it, like, that was local no, media. That was, that was, that was the, that was the, 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 the media, um, you know, ecosystem it. and dairy. Pat Ramsey, Rice Bowl, you, Pure Dairy. Pure Dairy. Uh, and, 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 and not... In the journal, you know, fair play to you because you're you're always you know it's a generous thing of you to do. You know, you're not getting, you know, corporate money for conversations like this, but I think no. it it speaks volumes about your passion for your town, you know, and that's what I love about social media as well because it's a leveler. There's no stars, you know, this notion of stars and fame and all the rest of TV nonsense. You know, that sort of aren't we all beautiful thing? You know, mm. people know that that's a nonsense, really. Like, yeah. I, so I like I like what you're doing. You know, I really like that you're leveling. And asking important stuff about daily life here, you know, and, and people getting on because it helps. I mean, it helps me. Yeah, you know? I, I think, and I think people, people, it's nice for people to hear of uh, from people around the city, people who they're, they're they've either you know know of um, or possibly don't know of. I think you know you don't often get the opportunity to speak as yourself, as you know, uh, no, yeah. without interviewing somebody else. Um, and I think there's a lot of people's stories out there that don't get told. Well, I'm lucky though. I mean, I'm not in any way defensive, but you know, because I can be curious about developing dairy, I can cross that commercial line at times to go right. Here's a business that is doing something which is important because not because they're selling, you know, deodorant, but because there's a great dairy story here. So I, I'm yeah. lucky I have a wee bit of freedom there, but not as much no. as you, you know. Well, of course, and you, I mean, you've afforded it to me on, you know, recently on the on the, the likes of the Pure Dairy Market, which uh, which by the way, folks, launches on the 29th of March. Uh, Monday the 29th, uh, yeah. Where I would, I mean, I would like, as maybe our conversation nears an end, uh, I'd like to challenge you about the next thing, which is about power. Mm -hmm. So it's podcasting, there's content, but there's power. And I've challenged you and other principals that I see in the town that mm -hmm. it's, uh, if the politic isn't working, maybe you think the politics here is fabulous, by the way, maybe you're very happy who you vote for and good luck to you. But if the politic isn't working here in, the, in our communities, surely it's for you, the thinkers, the innovators, uh, the people who want to be free of the stuff that maybe kept us back and kept us apart. You know, I think the next move there past podcast is politics. Yeah, not for I, I, I funny I talked it's about this you. with <laughs> talked about this with Sarah Cannon and it's it's I don't think it's for me. I think mm. I would end up being ultimately too frustrated with politics. Mm. I believe that I would um go into it with the best intentions and I believe yeah. that um, I believe that my integrity would be in the right place, and I would want to do do right by people. But I I genuinely believe that it's systematically, it's 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 that's where the flaws problematic. Are. I, but I mean, I, but I mean, when that changes, everything changes. Like Yates talked about, you know, everything changed, changed utterly. I want to. I hope I live to see that that everything's changed, changed utterly. Mm -hmm. you know, the stuff that shocks me that it's like me out of my comfort zone, finding new comfort zones. You know. This could be the most, and for many, of course, was it is the most amazing place in the world. I get that, but when you see what we have here, even by way of our shared story, the history stuff, uh, the wit, the intelligence, the literacy, the uh, cheek, charm, the geography. God, you know, I I sometimes think, God Almighty, yeah. you know, we settle for so little. Yeah, no, uh, you're right, and and I and I often wish that I was the person to do, to do it. the to do the pol political thing because I often get so frustrated. Um, but I have to say, at this stage in my life, it's not something it's not I'm, you. I'm I'm not thinking about. I'm, I'm thinking about because mm -hmm. it just mm -hmm. it doesn't appeal to me, and I just think I would rather. I still want to make change. I still want mm -hmm. to be a person who makes change, and I think I can make change with some of you know the work that we've already been doing that doesn't have to be around the politics yeah change doesn't um, have to be yeah that kind of change i guess yeah yeah yeah. You, but i'd be interested you know, to see if that was ever to change you know that we can fully leave all those sort of 
difficult it's very, you know, the, the stuff. It's it's so tribal, Mark. I mean, how do how do you get people to move away from those 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 red lines and that those well, thinking? You know, where I don't know. I I haven't. I've got ideas, but it's a yeah. com- you, you're talking about building a complete a complete political movement, which is ironically mm-hmm. what I think people thought your dairy was when it started. <laughs> you did, right. you did too. I did, I did. Yeah, and you were onto something. Yeah, and you still are. <laughs> Who knows? It may go, it may come back that way when when moods change and 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 things change, and and I yeah. get in, get into the next stage in my life when I'm in a, at a more older and wiser uh, and I've learned something. But right now, at the moment, I don't want to be um, that. I don't want to be that. I don't want to be a politician. Interesting. I watch it all the time. You know, you watch longing for, you know, lo- with longing, with with willfulness. You know, you're going, just want to see it born and birth. You know, the yeah. whole waterside thing, the whole city centre thing. You know, our communities. You just want to see it. You know, I was just thinking, you know, about culture and stuff. The St. Patrick's thing, you know, today, and you know, all our concerns about you know boys drinking up up the bit and wrecking the place. You know, we can do better than that, Kieran. You know, yeah. we can be well, culturally. My God, you know. Anyway, better times ahead. There is. There absolutely is. Do you play that Mark, guitar? Or is that just a prop? I actually do. I do play it. Do I'm not going to play it. I'm not going to play it for you, but I do play it. Uh, I might. I might play it on some future show. Uh, some right. future podcast. I play guitar too. What about yeah. Marcus and Murray? Can you imagine anybody going to that gig? Any like, people will be avoiding Marcus and that. Murray. <laughs> Marcus and Murray. What do you call them? Bob and what do you call Bob Mortimer Mulligan and O'Hare. <laughs> oh, I, I, that sketch Mulligan and O'Hare. I... <laughs> Marcus and Murray sing all the old classics. Yeah. Kind of rem- reminds me of that um, the Ulster Fry uh, meme. Have you seen that Foster uh, Foster and Adams when we, when we put Arlene, Arlene Foster <laughs> and Jerry Adams into the? <laughs> do you wake up with them in the morning? By the way, yeah. or Billy, what happens there? Where do you get those? Because I'll think you of know... three of those in my life. You get three of those every week. Well, I mean, now I've got a good team in place for doing that. You know what's funny? I'm starting to now, now that my life is starting to relax a bit, the last year has just been so, like, thing with anxiety. I've just been living in a, in a you know, world of uncertainty and anxiety that a lot of people have. And yeah. I've been so open and honest about this. Like, my comedy brain just hasn't really worked for the last 12 months. You know, it hasn't, I just don't, I haven't really been observing funniness and things. And it's only in the last couple of, um, the last couple of weeks where, I'm starting to relax. Um, I'm, I think I'm doing this podcast has really helped me to kind of Good. connect with myself again. And I'm finding myself now, like, writing, you know, writing out wee ideas. I mean, that's funny. That's kind of, that's like old, pure dairy. Do you wear a hand hat, si? I, I actually don't have one. I'm going to have to get one. Did you one see for... when you're out wearing your, if you're wearing a hand hat, do you know what I want to do every time I see somebody else with a hat? I want to go hand on heart. I want to go hand on heart. Hand on you know, heart. Just say, I know, you but got... so we can start that. As a, as, a ke- as a kind of like a, do you feel like kind of like 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 when bus drivers see each other on the on the road to Belfast yeah. and when you when they always flash the lights? Do you, feel like a, do you feel like that when people when you see someone else a hand hat? Like, it's it's our wee thing. It's our hat. Uh, you well, you know what? Hannah will be on the podcast soon, so I'm gonna I'm Good. gonna tell her that I'm gonna tell her she's that great. That's... she's great. She's great. Also. I will. I will pass on the message. Kieran, you're good crack, man. Mark, it's been great chatting to you. Thanks for your Hi, time. Listen, good good um, luck with this, man. You're doing uh, really important. I'm not just saying that. You know, you're doing really important stuff. All we can do is uh, do our best. You know, hopefully these conversations are um, helping somebody. They're certainly helping to, me. So to thine own <laughs> self be true, isn't it? Yes, exactly. Huh. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this is pure cheesy. <laughs> pure cheesy. <laughs> Mark, gentlemen, uh, keep up the keep up the good work on on the on the radio. And, Appreciate um, it, man. And uh, I will be um, I'll be in touch. We'll get a pint soon when it all settles down. Pint, we bite date. Great. Pint, we bite date. Where are you going to first? Uh, first we have to ask that now. Where are you going to first? Where's your Where's your, Where's getting your first dollar? Uh, James, the brewery has James. got exciting plans. If you've got, if you run into a few Bob, I see Ian has done Browns the water side up. So I hear Sean that. and Sudi upstairs is doing a thing called the Night Stairs. I've been. You've been? It's amazing. I was on. No one ever went quiet and down a wee bit before Christmas. Yeah, yeah. I went. I no, I haven't been. Well, stay safe, buddy. Look after yourself. You too, uh, man. Good luck to you, uh, lady, as well. Okay. Yeah. We'll get it for a, we'll get it for a wee dander soon, maybe. We will. Socially distanced. Marcus and Murray. Marcus and Murray. I'll, we'll bring the guitars. We'll play in St. Collins Park, just in the in the in the grass. Two meters apart. <laughs> this little track called Two Meters Apart. <laughs> I'll tell you about this song. Here. <laughs> All right, man. All right, buddy. I'll chat to you soon. Take care. Go easy.
Cool, easy. All right, take it easy, man. Bye. That was really interesting. Um, always good to talk to someone that knows how to talk uh, even more than I do, uh, because I get to shut up, which is always good. Uh, next week, I will be speaking to the one and only Mickey Doherty. I've been trying to get him on since the way last year, actually. Uh, Mickey was probably one of the first people that I ever asked. You know, and me and Mickey have crossed paths on a number of occasions. We're not we're not close friends, but we have a couple of interesting we anecdotes that we can tell that uh, one in particular on Pure Dairy where um, I am totally going to throw myself on the bus for. We're going to put it all out there and have the crack about it, but I have massive respect for Mickey and sure who doesn't love Mickey Doherty. So I hope he's not tuning in for that. I hope he turns up. Now we haven't recorded it yet, so if there's no episode next week, uh, Mickey pied me. So let's cross our fingers.